Welcome back to Let's Code Livestream. So today, well, yesterday, let's say, we were learning about HTML, and today we're gonna to be learning about CSS, which is kind of the, the way that you get a, a more stylish page than just plain text, or just uh, just kind of bold headers and you know images and everything just kind of moves vertically down the page. So, uh, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and the cascading aspect is that um, both kind of vertically or the load order of the file matters. So if you define uh, identical rules, like um, that you want your H1s to be 20 pixels, and then later you just say that your H1 is going to be 15 pixels, then um, you will see the 15 pixels because the later one will work. So that's one aspect of cascading. The second aspect is that you can layer styles. So you can say kind of layer a default H1 style, right? And then later say, if an H1 is inside of a container, then it has this size. Or if an H1 has a class, then it has this size. And those, those are the kind of ways that you can get it to cascade. So let's see here, do we need to run this or just move on? Okay, so CSS is a different language than HTML. It's technically true. Uh, style elements, that's true as well. Uh, it doesn't only have to go in the header, by the way, you can inline them later. You can also inline a style on an element itself, although you really shouldn't do that. But in some rare cases, it's it's kind of preferred to do it that way than, um, than it's rare, but occasionally there's, there's a use case where you want a specific element to have a specific style, and you don't necessarily need to abstract that, always abstract that into a CSS file per se. So uh, let's see here. So we have, this is kind of the way it defined. By the way, a style attribute, uh, or style tag, sorry, has an attribute, which is type, and it should be text slash CSS. And I left that out, but that's okay. You know, they're gonna, they're not gonna teach you everything, right? Uh, add a style to the head. All right, we'll add the style here. So that's, that's an actual style tag. Uh, you import a style via a link, a uh, link um, element, I guess you can call it. So we added style and it doesn't do anything because it's just an empty node. And now we will paste in some actual style. So the star means that it applies to all, to all elements. So for example, all elements have the font family of Georgian times, regardless of whether they actually have display text. And anchor tags will have a color of sea green instead of this blue color, which came from browser defaults, and a text decoration of none. Likewise, a border, or sorry, an image will have a border radius of 100%, which is how you make a circle. So we made a circle. And we turned this into a sea green, which I actually kind of like that color. I'll have to try to remember sea green as a HTML color that isn't really glaring. All right. So I think it's saying that we can import them. So take a look at the code to the right. Note that the index HTML has evolved to include both HTML and CSS code. Uh, yes. That's technically true because we just did that. So now we're going to basically take this and move it into our style.css would be my guess. Hopefully I get it right. And we don't have to indent it when it's in its own file. Do I need to save this? It probably saves it automatically in the background. And now we'll get rid of our style node altogether. And we, wait, take a look. Cut the CSS code. And delete the remaining style element. Great, okay. So now we can run. We don't have it imported yet though. So that'll be the next step, right? So a link, which is similar to a anchor tag. In fact, in a lot of ways, sounds more, sounds more like what an anchor tag would actually do. Uh, but link is how you get, how you actually import a style sheet. 
All right, so now with that, we have our circle and our sea green color again. And uh, the value of the attribute, oh, so we have a type here as well. <laughs> it's funny, it didn't, it didn't put type on the style element. Just maybe style elements don't have a type. Let's see here. Maybe I was wrong about that. Is it possible? Type, type CSS. Uh, so yeah, it's not scoped or anything like that. It should have a type C uh, CSS. It's it's the only it's the only good one, right? I don't. Um, there are other style kind of types, um, but I do believe that CSS is the only one that a modern browser will interpret properly. It'd be really nice if browsers would support SCSS and less and less other, the other pre-compiled ones, the ones that you compile the CSS. It'd be so, so nice if the browsers would support that. Uh, although that would probably lead to people not compiling multiple files into a single file and just including multiple files and letting the browser figure it out. But in uh, HTML 2.0 world, that might not be such a bad thing because of the simultaneous browser downloads that should be happening. Uh, rather, the the server should be HTTP uh, pushing additional resources as it streams the main, the main file. So we didn't put a type on it, but we can. And rel is style sheet. And in general, you don't necessarily need to remember these. You can just go and find a different one and recreate it. And oftentimes if you're using a PHP framework, um, you kind of use PHP functions or methods to push on uh, style sheets and it will add this kind of stuff for you. Or it'll be a parameter for the function itself. So, I made it relative. Yeah, I made it actually not even a base relative, but we can do it like that. The style sheet was working without the forward slash, which means that it's relative to the current file and not relative to the um, the main the URL, or the uh, domain portion of the URL. Okay, that should be that should be that for this. So far so good. So we've learned about some of the attributes. So the, remember this is, uh, this link, what did it do? Uh, that isn't a valid HTML element. That is. Um, the HTML element link has a couple of HTML attributes. One is href, which is super required. And then a rel or relation and a type are also definitely recommended. You should always have them. And they're always going to be the same thing, which is why the browsers don't technically require it because they guess really well. They guess that you mean a text slash CSS file. Oh, add a link called style. All right, I'll do that. href equals forward slash style CSS or just style that CSS. Well, is a style sheet and uh, type text slash CSS. Oh, look at all of that. Did I link the style sheet? Indeed I did, and I saw a link. Maybe it doesn't want the slash. Let's see, so we have a link. Did it want me to change this one? href rel style sheet type close link href rel type It looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit run until it lets me put in the code that it thinks is good. Oh, 
I might have misspelled style sheet. I feel like that changed visually, but it might have just shifted because of this change that added that back on. Oh, look at that, we got the green. And now we have completed the CSS setup. So let's look at basic CSS structure and syntax. Up until now, it's just been telling us how to get them onto the page. So, CSS as a language is very simple. You basically have a selector, um, which is either a, a HTML node type, like HTML and body and H1 and anchor tags, right? Or a tag, we can call them. Or it's a class, like this. Or it's a, there's an ID one which would be like this. So if we had like pound main, that would be a valid CSS selector. And then there's a bunch of pseudo selectors. So for example, you could say like a um, hover or something like that, you know, and that the pseudo selector hover basically is a state. So um, when, you, when you hover a link, oh look, we have one right here. So this background and text color changes when the, the mouse enters and leaves it because of presumably a hover pseudo selector. There are other ones that are also very specific. So for example, inputs have um, input, uh, something like a type equals submit. That would be a good way to select a specific kind of input, not just a text input or something like that. You want the submit button kind of input. So that's what a selector is. Uh, and then after that we have um, a brace. You can have more than one, which is what the commas do. Uh, you can also have more than one without commas. I saw some down here like this. And that is a kind of child element. So there's a element somewhere, could be a div, it's probably a div, that has the class main and there's inside of it is a element, probably a div again, that has a class of containers. So there's an element somewhere that looks a little bit like this. And then I'm not gonna do the closing ones, but you can use your imagination. Right? And then at this one, and the position relative. Right? And have the top 100. But this is this is what that this single selector means basically style this element or the content in it, right? And then you have braces, braces always open and close. And then you have um, directives, I guess you could call these. Uh, declarative, non-computed, non-variables kind of a thing where you get to say, here's a property uh, called position and we're going to assign it uh, a value of relative. Here's a property called top and it's going to be assigned a value of 100 pixels. Uh, most likely the container that it's referencing is this. And what we have is that this is moved down 100 pixels from where it would normally be without the top 100. And that's what the combination of these two properties uh, gives you. And we're gonna be learning all of what I just said again. So let's define a tag selector called P for paragraphs. And inside of it, we will give it some, nope, nope, we're gonna do H1, we're gonna do H1. That was just an example, let's test. And now our H1 will have a property, great. I even used the right word for that, I'm surprised, and value. Separated by colon and always ending in semicolon. You don't have to end in semicolon if there's only one, but you should pretty much always end in semicolon Z's anyway because it makes it easier to troubleshoot. It makes it easier to add new properties without having to realize that you were missing a semicolon on the one before it. Change the color to fire brick. Another very interesting HTML color. We have a fire brick and we apparently need a font size or something. Font size of 18 pixels. 
so it's a lot smaller. Oh, sorry, this is for a paragraph I didn't read. So now the header will be bigger and the, the paragraphs will be a little bigger too. All right. You'll note that didn't change the size for the ordered and unordered lists that we were working on last time. Okay, so now... All right. Use one selector to change the color of a heading paragraph to heading of the heading and paragraph. Okay. So now we'll have an H1 and a P and we will give it a color of dark, dark slate gray. Now that worked and you might say, but what about the fire brick? Well, this actually, since there's no specificity to which H1 should be that color, if we put this one first, then our color would be fire brick because we defined the fire brick style afterwards. And we didn't say that it was, that we didn't make this one H1 any more specific than uh, the other. And so basically the last one wins. And in most cases, that's actually really good behavior because you can have a style sheet that you don't have control over, at least don't want to have control over. So maybe you're, um, you're using a framework like Bootstrap or something and you load that Bootstrap first and then you later say, oh, you know, this one, uh, or I, I want my headings to be, you know, this size or whatever. You can define the rule exactly like the bootstrap does. And in fact, that's oftentimes the best way to do it is to go and look, use your, your browser tools to find the rule that's making that link blue or something like that. And then literally copy the rule and either scope it differently, meaning putting it inside of something that's like .main h1, or uh, just paste it and ensure that it's always loaded after the other one and you'll, you'll guarantee that you win, that your rule wins the, the kind of ordering rules. All right, there's a special selector that instantly selects every single element on the web page. Uh, yes, it does, and it also follows the ordering rules. So you can say dot main space star, uh, for example, to say all the children of main. So we will use the universal selector inside the of the selector's body, set the font family to Georgia. You should always set that one top at the top. And we got a slightly wider font. So some best practices are to always indent them and always move them down. A very Another very common one is that if you have something that uh, kind of nests, then you should indent that immediately after what you would be masking. So let's say we had dot main and we said that that had a background color of blue or something. And then we had a uh, dot, we wanted all the H1s in main to have a color of dark slate gray, right? Um, then what we would do is we would, this is, this is just a convention. It's very common to say that we would indent it and say dot main H1. And it undid that for me. And then inside of this, we would say color dark slate blue, which we've already defined, but I'm just, this is just an example. Uh, let's say green, right? Then using indention to kind of group them together with this one, you might say, oh, why, why can't we do this? And for those of you who think that that's a good idea, then you should look at less and SAS as CSS frameworks that allow you to do things like this. And then the compiler will expand that out to something that looks very, very much like what I just wrote. And we don't need this at all anymore. That's bizarre. 
I'm typing a brace and it's just bringing me down to that. All right. Mm -hmm. CSS has comments. Again, this these kind of comments are visible in the source. So do not use them to hide information or to insult somebody because they will be visible in the source if somebody chooses to look at it. So let's add a comment to anywhere and say all elements or something. Famously, HTML and CSS do not have single line comments. So you cannot have a comment like this. That's not a comment. Same thing in HTML. A, uh, an HTML comment or XML comment actually is always implicitly multi-line, so you can have as many lines as you want. It can take up a single line like this, but it's only because you included the delimiter at the end of it, or token, we'll call that. Alrighty, so let's see, where are we? It's time to experiment. Oh, we're just experimenting. Okay, so let's talk about some of the elements that we have and some things that we can do to them uh, as an experiment to wrap up the day. So we've already learned that we can do like H1s and things like that, so that's pretty cool. And we learned that we can style images. Uh, but how about anchor tags, right? So anchor tags, as I alluded to before, have pseudo selectors. They also, you'll note that they have a uh, text decoration or something. Decoration, none, and then that should take away the underline. It does, and we could say that this is color of um, purple. Why does it do that? That's weird. And we can use the pseudo selector for hovered to change its color to blue when it's hovered. Uh, let's change it to red because it was already blue and now it won't be blue anymore. So I don't want to set it, set it back to blue. So we'll run that, we get purple. And if we hover, we get red, just like so. We can of course mix back in things like text decoration. Uh, maybe we'll do overlined instead of underline, just to make it more fun. <laughs> so that's fun, right? So um, let's see, what else can we experiment with? Unordered lists have um, some interesting stuff we can do to them. For example, we can take away the dots, uh, UL, and that is a list decoration or something like that, list style, maybe. I don't remember off the top of my head. We'll say none. And if we run it, we will take away the dots. Uh, there's also a um, there's also one to determine if the list style is inside or outside of it. Uh, let's take away all the paddings and margins on a UL to demonstrate that. So we'll bring back our little dot by taking that out and we will say margin zero and padding zero as well. So now when we run this, it will be smack dab up against the page. And you'll note that although we do have the dot, we can't see it. And that's because it's actually outside of the list itself. And since we have no padding and no margin, that dot appears like right here. Um, so let's, let's try to bring that back. So we'll say, I'll try to search for some CSS here. This is like a custom Google search. And we'll search for um, list, list style. See if we can find it from that. Uh, so list style actually is contains more than one thing. And in fact, it then contains the position as outside right here. And that would be the list style position, which I didn't even realize that there were subtypes for this. So we'll do a uh, list style position and we'll say inside and that should make it visible again. 
And when we run that, we will now see the dots. And those dots now um, are included in the actual block of the UL, meaning that if we gave a background position, let's, let's give us um, some 20 pixels of margin, which will give us a nice border around it. And now if we give us a background color, uh, we'll be able to see see the block and you'll see that that dot is inside or at least mostly inside. That's the browser deciding kind of where to put it. So don't ever rely on that being perfect. The default is outside, which means that the dots are outside of the colored area. And that's oftentimes not what you want. So just keep that in mind. That's, that's why I'm going over them. Uh, similar things for ordered lists. Uh, you can also change the, the decoration to be like a bullet or a bullet and a circle and stuff like that. So we'll do um, list style, what was it? List style, it's hype. Which is apparently usually disc. So this shouldn't change much. But if we change this to circle, it will be hollow. And there are other ones. Yeah, there's there's a variety of those. If you use an IDE with autocomplete, um, you can get kind of a better list of them. <laughs> so that wraps it for the day, I believe. I think that, yeah, nine of nine. So we're gonna move on to more CSS tomorrow but that should give you enough to kind of work on for the day. Uh, if you enjoy content like this, please subscribe. Uh, I have a goal to get to 100 subscribers because I get to name my ch channel if I do so, so please subscribe. And if you follow me at Jared Kipe on, um, on Twitter, you can get notices of when I'm going to be doing the live streams. So um, until tomorrow, you know, get your stuff set up and keep coding.